This is Joe Delio from the Palo Alto Networks community team bringing you a Palo Alto Networks video tutorial. In today's video tutorial I will be showing you how to configure Wildfire, the parts of Wildfire, and how to get more information from it. What you will learn in this video tutorial, you'll learn how to configure the general settings for Wildfire on your device, how to enable Wildfire and security policies to upload files to the Wildfire cloud, how to view the logs to verify Wildfire forwarding and the results, how to view the Wildfire portal page. We'll talk about configuring Wildfire now, but before we start off, we are going to assume that all the licensing has been configured as needed. For any more information about licensing, please see my previous video tutorial about what is Wildfire, where I talk about the licenses, and there is a link inside of the video description below that is linked out to the Palo Alto Networks live community page. So the first thing we're going to be doing is inside the web GUI. We're going to go to Device, and then under Setup, and then Wildfire, you're going to see the general settings here. Inside here, you're going to notice the Wildfire server, which in this example is the Wildfire Public Cloud. Again, inside the video tutorial, I explain all the different types where you can have a WF500 locally if you do not want to export the files across the Internet. Uh, otherwise, it will just be uploaded you know, via the Wildfire Public Cloud. Uh, and the size limits, as you notice here, these are the default values. Inside of here, you can click on the sprocket here to get more information. Inside of here, this is the size limit for each of the file types, flash, APK, PDFs, etc. And if you need to change that, like for example, it's 2 megabit for the file size, but you can go from 1 all the way up to 10 megabit uh, limitation. 2 megabit used to be the limitation uh, in earlier versions of Wildfire, but in the later versions of PanOS, it's increased that, and you'll see it like PDFs are limited there to 1 meg, so 100k to uh, 1 meg in size. You also have an option to report the benign files here if you'd like to still see benign files also. The session information settings, this is when the file is uploaded to Wildfire, what information that you want to include with it. If you do not want any information included, just edit and uncheck any option that you do not want to have sent and have reported on to Wildfire. I will mention one other thing. Uh, underneath Content ID, you'll see an option for Content ID settings to allow forward of decrypted content. If you are, in fact, decrypting the traffic, Wildfire can upload decrypted files by enabling this option. By default, it is not enabled, so it's always good to go in here and check it. So if you're decrypting it, you can also forward that information to Wildfire. Continuing the configuration here, we need a file blocking security profile in order to enable Wildfire properly. In order to do that, if you go to Objects, and then File Blocking, and inside of here, you'll see where all of your uh, the profiles are. I'm not exactly sure which options you might have by default, but as an example, a lot of the profiles you maybe have are read-only. And if you click on any one of them to look, if you see read-only, then it's just that. You can't modify it. So the easiest thing to do is just to clone it. What I've done here is you can click the one that we have is like best practice. I hit clone, and that creates the same name dash one inside of here this is where you have the options on exactly what to do with different file types as I explained before and in my previous video of what file types there's a handful of file types that are supported portable executable PDF files Java class files PDF files different ones like that inside of here this is where you'll have an option to block, continue, alert, etc. In fact, if you click on any one of these rules that we have inside of here, you'll see all their options. So all the options in here are, again, to alert, block, continue, forward, and continue and forward. Alert is just that. It just alerts it. It just basically logs it. It doesn't do anything to the file at all. Block will be just that option to block this certain file type, whatever file type you configure here. It will log it and block it. 
you have an option to continue where the user is presented with a continue page to continue. What if they were going to be downloading the file? You can give them a prompt to let them know that it will be scanned. You have an option to forward it, which this is a forward option to Wildfire. So when the file is will be looked at and to be uploaded, this forward option will do that. And the continue and forward is the combination that will be prompted as well as in forward to Wildfire. So this is where you go through, have your different options for, for the different applications if you want to specify them, different file types, specific direction if you needed to block it specifically in a direction, and then the action. So it's very granular what you can do here. Now once you have the file blocking profile in place, then what you need to do is go into your policies. Once you have the file blocking profile in place, you need to go to your policies security and inside of your rule base you'll need to actually choose the security profile for the file blocking profile. The one that we modified is best practice one. You OK that and commit in order to make that change take effect. Now that you've enabled Wildfire and you've committed, the question that people always want to find out is, well, how do I know files are being forwarded and how do I look to see what the verdict on the files that are being uploaded are? In the later versions of like PanOS 6.1 and PanOS 7.0, you actually have inside the monitor tab, you have a Wildfire submissions. Before in 6.0, I believe, and 5.0, the only options that you had were to go into the, your data filtering and inside of the data filtering logs you had to look in here and see which files had the action of forward to wildfire. For any verdict you would have to go to the wildfire portal and to view it there. But in 6.1 and 7.0 you actually have options to see the wildfire submissions and you see all the files that have been uploaded to wildfire and then you'll see the category and the results. Inside of here you'll see the category which will show you whether it's benign or malicious or grayware. If you actually want to get rid of the benign files and just see any grayware or malware or malicious files you can actually click on benign and then change it and you can put an n eq for not equal to press enter and you'll notice here that this is where it'll show the malicious files in order to view more information about this you can just click on the magnifying glass on any one of those and you can see that the category is malicious more information as far as relative logs whenever you know you can see what rule the web browsing was using this in order to get even more detailed information about this you can click on the wildfire analysis report and this is the same information you'd be getting off the portal but you can get it local here and when it finally comes up you can download this as a pdf file which is recommended if you want to go through all the details because these can be very detailed with all of the behavior that this file or executable or whatever is, is doing. You see all the registry files, you see all the system files, you see process activity, file activity, pretty much everything that is being done, you'll see exactly all of its behavior. This is where you can see the verdict is malware and you can have the sample file. You can even download that sample file right there. Now for the wildfire portal itself, you have the ability to go in and go to wildfire.paloaltonetworks.com and log on there. And once you're logged on, you'll see your dashboard, which will have all of the firewalls that are uploading to wildfire listed. You can click on the serial number for your device and inside of here this is where you can see where all the verdict whether it's benign malicious etc uh, you can click on any one of these and you'll see again the exact behavior 
of any different file you'll see whether it's benign you get the option to download as a PDF uh, and this is exactly all the same details that I was showing you in the smaller window it gives in a full web page window and again this is all of the activity and the behavior of the file again this is benign so this is just non-malicious information that's happening here. Before I forget, one option that you have when you're on the wildfire portal page and you're listing in all the reports here, you'll notice the verdict column here. It lists everything from benign to pending to whether it's grayware or malware. You have the option to click this drop down underneath the verdict to see whether it's benign, malware, grayware, pending. And this is the way you can list out just the files, for example, that are have the malware verdict. That concludes this video tutorial. I sure hope that this has helped you understand how to configure Wildfire better. As always, we welcome all feedback and comments below. I will be including inside of the video description links to the Wildfire site as well as a link to the previous video tutorial talking about what Wildfire is. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to us off of YouTube and keep a lookout for any more video tutorials that we'll be publishing soon.